Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge with another tutorial for you on using Adobe Illustrator. In today's video, I'll be talking about the Line Segment tool, which is a tool you'll find yourself using quite regularly in Illustrator. It's also a tool that if you know the right buttons to push and the places to go and how things work, you'll be able to do a lot more than draw a straight line. I'll give you 10 tips today on how to use the Line Segment tool, and hopefully you'll learn some new things that that great little tool can do. So let's get started. I'll move over to a document which I've already started, and for tip number one, we'll talk about the Line Segment Tool Options dialog box. First, I need to get the Line Segment Tool, which is on the left toolbar. It looks like a forward slash, but the keyboard shortcut is the backslash. And when I press on that, you can see the little crosshairs which tell me that my tool is active. I'll click on the artboard to open up the dialog box, and this allows me to put in a specific length and a specific angle for my line. So I'm going to type in four inches for the length, and then I'll tab down and I'm going to type in 90 degrees for the angle. I'm not going to check fill line because we're not going to be creating any lines that are going to go together to create a closed path, and so we won't need a fill color. I'll press the OK button here and get the Selection Tool Keyboard Shortcut V and just drag this down here and I have that 4 inch 90 degree angle line which I requested. And that's how you use the Line Segment Tool Options dialog box to create a line. Now for tip 2, I'll show you how to make some changes to that line in the Properties panel. Let's come over to the Properties panel, and I'm going to change the reference point for my line, and I'm just going to place it in the center here, and then I'm going to type in 45 degrees and press Enter. Now when I did that, because the reference point is in the center, the rotation occurred in the center of my line. I'm going to undo that, keyboard shortcut Command Z, and I'm going to click on the top, because I have anchors at the top, and anchors at the bottom. And I'll type in 45 degrees, and it's going to change from the top area. I'll press the Enter key, and you can see that it's rotating from this anchor point. Now I'll undo that, keyboard shortcut Command Z, and change the reference point to the bottom anchor. And again, I'll type in 45 degrees and press the Enter key, and it's changing from that bottom anchor. Another change that I can make is I can flip along the horizontal axis, and so when I press this icon, it's flipping it that direction. And let me undo that, keyboard shortcut Command Z. And I can also flip it along the vertical axis. I'll click on that icon, and it makes that change. And I'll undo that, keyboard shortcut Command Z. Now, you'll notice here that the width value and the height value are no longer matching this size of my line, but I can click on the ellipsis here if I want to know what the length of my line is, and this area here is going to show me it's 4 inches and 45 degrees, and so I'll just leave it at that. Now I'm going to delete this line, and we're going to move to tip number 3, which is using some special keys when we draw our lines. I'll get the Line Segment Tool, Keyboard Shortcut Backslash, and first I'm going to hold the Shift key down, and I'm going to click down on my mouse, and I'm just going to drag to the right, and I'm going to try to move up and down, but I'm not able to, because when I hold the Shift key down, and I go to the left or to the right, the Shift key is going to constrain any movement, and it's going to leave me with a perfectly horizontal line. Now if I come back to my starting point, and I drag up or drag down, I have a perfect vertical line. I can also rotate this line, and it's going to snap in place at 45 degree increments. So that's using the Shift key. I'll delete that, and now I'm going to hold down the Option key. I'm going to place my anchor right in the very center of the artboard, and I'm going to drag out, and you can see that as I drag, the line is increasing equally from that center point, and I can also 
rotate in either direction and everything is occurring from that center point. So that is using the option key. All right, let me just drag this out. I'll hold the shift key down and I now have a horizontal line and we're ready to move to tip number four. I'll come over to the properties panel and I see under the word stroke that there is a dotted line, which means that if I press on that, I'm gonna find more options. So I'm gonna press on stroke and that opens up a stroke dialog box. I'm gonna increase the weight of our stroke to 20 points. And I want to point out this next area, which is the cap. And right now, the option that is selected is the butt cap. And that means that the ends of my lines are butted up next to the beginning anchor point and the ending anchor point. But I can click on this second icon, and that's going to give me a round cap. It adds a little space beyond each of these anchors on either side, and it rounds the corners. Now I can also click on this last one, which gives me a projecting cap, and it also is adding a little space beyond the anchor points, but it is square instead of rounded. These other two options for corners and aligned strokes, we'll talk about in another video when we're dealing with rectangles. Now for tip five, we'll make a dashed line. I'm going to click on dashed line, and right now I have a four point dash and a four point gap, and because the weight of my line is so heavy, there's no way you'll ever be able to see this. So I'm going to type in some really big values. I'll put in 60 points for the dash and 50 points for the gap. Then I'll just click on the artboard to deselect. And this gives me a nice dashed line. It's heavier than I would use under most circumstances. But let me just show you one little trick here, which might open up your eyes to some other uses for this. I'm gonna come back over to this cap area and I'm gonna click on the round cap. And then if you increase the weight here, I can think of several ways to use that. All right, let's just make a regular dashed line. I'm gonna click back on stroke here and I'm gonna move this cap back over to the butt cap. I'm going to change the weight of this to three points and type in eight points for the dash and six points for the gap and press the enter key. And here is how you create just a simple dashed line. Now I'm gonna go back and click on stroke. And for tip number six, we're going to add arrowheads. I'm going to unclick the dashed line and come down to the arrowheads area. Now the left bin is corresponding with the starting anchor. And I drew my line from left to right, so left anchor is the starting anchor. And the right bin is the ending anchor. Now if you draw from right to left, you'll just have to reverse that because your right's gonna be this starting bin. So let's twirl down here and you can see that I have 16 different choices for the point of my arrow. And I'm going to select arrow number nine and then I'm going to come over to the ending anchor and I have 16 ends of arrows and I'm going to just choose number 17. This is a long skinny arrow and if I decided I wanted it to point the other direction I can either come in and change these in the bins or I can simply click on the swap icon and that moves the arrow to pointing the other direction. Now I can increase the entire line by increasing the weight and as I move up in points you can see that the arrows are making changes but let's say that this was as heavy as I wanted my line and that's 10 points I can still increase the end of the arrow and the beginning of the arrow by coming to this next area and I can scale the bottom area separately from the top area or I can click on the link and then as I increase them, they both increase at the same percentage. So let's unlink this and I'm just going to continue to increase this arrow. 
and that's how you make the changes in the sizes of your arrows. Now right now, under alignment, the arrows are aligned to the end of the anchors. I can click on this first icon and it's going to extend the arrow tip and the back of the arrow beyond our anchor points. I'm going to just leave it here to where it keeps the same size that I wanted. Now, arrows are not the only thing that are available in here. You can go down past the arrows and you can find some scissors. And let me just remove this arrow and I'm going to come back over and I'm going to select my dashed line and you could create an entire coupon with the dashed line and the little scissors showing up and if you wanted to decrease the size of your scissors without changing the width of your line that's how you would do it. There are also some pointing hands down here and you can click those and let's take the dash line off and you have another little tool here for you to use. So that is how to create arrowheads. I'm going to remove my little pointer here. And then for tip number seven, I'm going to show you how to change a line by applying a width profile to it. This is the line profile area. And right now our line is set to uniform. But if I twirl down, there are some other options and some shapes for my line. If I choose width profile number six, you can see that I have a rounded edge in the center of my line similar to this design. And the heavier the weight is, the more it looks like this profile. Let's try a different one. I'm going to press on the width profile number four. And this gives me a pointed edge. Now, if I come up and choose the round cap, you can see that I have even more options. I'll show you a couple more here just to get kind of an idea of some of the different shapes that are available. Okay, I'm going to move this back to uniform and I'll change the cap back to the butt cap. And for tip number eight, I'm going to show you how to change the line by using the width tool. Now, the width tool is found on the left toolbar. It is keyboard shortcut shift W. And you can tell it's active by that little wavy line underneath the arrow. And when I have this line selected, I can press anywhere on this path and I can change the width of my line. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to reduce the size of my stroke to one point. And I want you to see how even a one point line can be changed. We can come back over here. And I can just keep making as many changes as I want. I think that kind of looks like a tree topper. And if I want to keep that profile, I'll come over and click on stroke and then come down to the profile area, twirl down to the very bottom and click on the icon add to profiles. And then I'm just going to name this Susan's tree topper and press OK. Now if I draw another line out, let me get the line segment tool, keyboard shortcut, backslash, drag out my line, come over, press on stroke, and I'm going to come down to Susan's tree topper and click on this. Nothing happened. And that's because I didn't change the weight yet. So as I change the weight, it's going to look just like the one that I created. So that's how you can change a line using the width tool and save the profile width if you want to. Now I need to delete these. For tip number nine, I'm going to show you how to add a stroke around a stroke. I'll get the line segment tool, keyboard shortcut backslash, and I'll drag a line out on the artboard and we'll make some changes. I'm going to click on stroke and I'm going to change the weight to 10 points and I'm going to change the cap to the round cap. And I'll 
click over here to close that out. And next, I'm going to click on this little ellipsis, which is going to open up the appearance panel. And the appearance panel is describing what is selected on the artboard. In this instance, there is a 10 point black stroke. Now the icon down here at the very bottom on the left is add new stroke. And when I click on that, Illustrator adds another stroke with the exact same attributes as the first one. Because they're exactly the same and on top of each other, you can't see both of them. I'm going to make a change to the bottom stroke. I'll click on the color and change it to red and then increase the size to 20 points. Now I have a stroke around a stroke. It sort of looks like an object that has a thick stroke around it, but it's not. And the functions of strokes versus objects are different, and you're going to be able to do different things with this line. And you can add as many strokes as you want. So let's click on this Add New Stroke icon. We're not going to change the new one that's on top. We're going to move to the one that's below it. And I'll click on the color and I'll change that to green. And now I'm going to increase the weight of this one to 40 points. And we have a stroke and then another stroke and yet a third stroke. So this is how you add strokes to strokes in Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to change the stroke weight to two points and I'll bring this cap back to the butt cap and then I'm going to change the color to black and delete our strokes and we are ready for tip number 10 which is using the tilde key to make some cool designs. So I'm going to get the line segment tool keyboard shortcut backslash. I'm going to hold the tilde key down which is the key just to the left of the number one on your keyboard and I'm going to just start dragging and I can make all sorts of beautiful designs. And I'm going to get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and deselect that so you can see what a gorgeous design that creates. And you can just play with that all day long. And I think you can make some really lovely artwork with this tilde key. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned some new tips on using the line segment tool. While you're thinking about it, right now, click that little subscribe button so that you don't miss a single episode as I continue to create tutorials that show you how to use Adobe Illustrator. Thank you for watching. Bye now.